So as I've been kept on getting to interview authors and stuff, one question that I make sure to ask all of them is what advice they would have for someone who's trying to be an author. So this is a little compilation of six different authors sharing their advice. And we have some small authors ranging to New York Times number one best-selling ones. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Um, number one, read, 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 um, and read widely, even if it's books you don't necessarily, um, if it's not in the genre you normally read, read anyway, so that you can yeah. learn from what other people have done. Um, and it's, it's a lot of practice. I mean, you, you don't, concert pianists don't walk up to a piano and, you know, know everything the first time they sit at a piano. It takes oh, work. Yeah. Um, so just don't be in a big rush. I know it's hard. It's writers, I think, are impatient because we're go getters, but um, read lots and write lots. Hopefully, I stole Lisa's answer. What are you going to say? Oh, no. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Um, okay, so here's my advice. It's probably a good idea if you have a certain kind of book that you love. It's probably that's the kind of book you should be writing. Mm -hmm. And so a good way to practice writing a story that you're going to love writing and you would enjoy reading yourself is to find the book that you love the most, the one that you've read over and over again and read it again. And this time, ask yourself as you're going through, you're reading it like a writer now, and you're reading it and you're thinking, what is it about this passage or this part that I love so much? What is it about this section that I can't wait to get to? Mm -hmm. And then maybe try and use your own characters and write something similar to the scene that you love to get to, whether it's, you know, maybe there's a, a first kiss or maybe it's mm -hmm. this danger, action, or some other kind of relationship, or somebody's in, you know, unconscious, and you, you're like, they're, you don't know if they're going to make it or not. Um, try and, and just write a scene, but use your own characters that sort of mimics those scenes that you love so much in other people's books. Or for the flip side of that, um, sometimes I suggest kids take their favorite book and write fan fiction about it. So use the established characters because that takes the pressure off creating all new people and put them in different situations. So both things, what Lisa suggests and this suggestion are sort of two sides of the same coin, um, but will teach you different things. Well, for something like that, what, what, I, would, what, what I would really sort of recommend is planning. You know, um, so, I mean, what I always say uh, when I'm when I'm like speaking at schools is like I have millions of ideas. Right. Because an idea can be anything. Uh, but I don't have that many stories. Right? Um, and the difference, obviously, is an idea can be anything and a story has a beginning, middle and end, you know. And so it's weird because sometimes you have this idea. It's like this is the greatest idea ever. When you try to flesh it out into a story, it's just not there, you know? Uh, and yet sometimes you take a more, I don't know, like mediocre sounding idea, but when you make it into a story, it just, boom, it just comes alive. Everything falls into place. And so if I can get a story to the point where I got the beginning, I got the ending, and I've got, let's say, two or three, like, really cool scenes in the middle, I know it's time to start writing, you know? So... I think one of the great ways to avoid working on something and running out of steam is when you've got the beginning, the ending, and a few set pieces along the way. Uh, because if you ever find yourself losing interest or you're sort of getting off topic, just like really focus on the next thing you know you need to get to and work on writing towards that. Um, I think I think that would that would help anybody, and I, even for me when I get. When I get a little lost, I, I do that. I go back to like the next big thing that definitely needs to happen and write in that direction. 
first do some ref introspective reflection on what it is that you're trying to achieve. Because for me, it was, I wanted a self-help book. I want to help people. There's other people that write about fiction. They like cowboys and Indians, so they want to write about that. There's others that they want to write about love. I mean, you got to find out what it is that moves you as a person first. What What is it going to make you passionate? What would you read? And then I believe what you have to do is take stock of your resources, right? How much time? Time is a resource. How much time do you have? Because you got to commit yourself to this. Mm -hmm. Secondly, how much money do you have to be able to get it to where it needs to be to be published? So, so how much impact are you trying to leave the world? Right? So Zurich could become the most famous writer of love stories on the history of the planet. And if you want to leave love stories to the world, then go for it. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. But likewise, Rip could be the most prolific self-help writer because he's just passionate about helping people. Mm -hmm. So Rick first has to think about what it is that moves Rick. Mm -hmm. Then comes the rest. That's right. Well, there is one. There is one that I've been abiding by my whole life, actually, even way before I've been interested in starting writing. In general, I love art. Uh, since the childhood, I've been interested in everything art-related. I just recently, the entire, entirety of my free time, I'm dedicated to something new art-related. I learned to draw, play musical instruments, mm -hmm. make animations, comics, and all that stuff. But all of that is one single thing. It's an art. And the best advice I can give, art cannot be rushed. Absolutely no matter what. Like I've said in the beginning, it has been 13 years since I, I actually came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. But I would not allow it to go out into the public until I felt that, yes, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. And personally, I cannot do anything to put um, to make it even better. No matter how much time it takes, never rush the art. That, that right. the, yeah, yeah the, you know, uh, part of it is if this is something you love to do, um, don't stop pursuing it because it is it is a difficult business, right? And it, it is after you've like written the book. Um, it becomes a business and it's, and it's hard and it's not, oftentimes it's not based on um, the quality of your work at all. It's based on somebody in a marketing department saying, can we figure out a way to, you know, find readers for this thing mm -hmm. uh, that if, if you are inclined and if you are a writer, uh, do not stop, you know, continue, continue to do this thing that you love and eventually um, you'll find the right thing. But don't, you know, you'll find the way to get it published, but don't make publishing the thing that you care most about. Make getting better as a writer the thing that you you care most about. And that is a kind of a, a like a good recipe, I think, for for everything in life, that if there's something you love, you know, continue to pour effort into it because just that engagement with something human, like, you know, writing and writing, telling stories has been like sort of at the center of who we are as human beings mm -hmm. since we became human beings, um, you know, doing something like that well and getting better at it is its own reward. So keep, keep going and don't get, don't get sad when it gets hard because it is, it's just hard. 